I grew up in Troutdell, Oregon, the gateway to the Columbia River Gorge, a short distance from my grandmother's house. I spent a lot of time at her house growing up. Uh, she taught me things like saving money is important and go to college. She gave me my first journal, which really was just like a binder full of paper. Um, and she was my first piano teacher. But one thing that my grandma did not teach me or talk much about was the fact that she was my grandfather's primary caregiver for many years. When I grew up, I saw my father retire in order to become this grandmother's primary caregiver. I became a caregiver too. My name is Jackie Eaton. I'm an assistant professor in the College of Nursing. I'm also a gerontologist. As an undergraduate student, I majored in theater. Yep. And I'm here today to tell you how these skills are vital in my current research with family caregivers of persons living with dementia. As an undergraduate student, I worked as a nursing assistant in assisted living facilities. The job was challenging, physically draining, and I loved it. I loved the unique stories of every person that I got to interact with. One woman that I got to care for, she had really challenging behaviors. She would bite, hiss, spit, swear, yell, anything to stop us from providing her with the support that she needed. I would ask her questions, trying to make a connection, trying to distract her, to make those caregiving tasks easier. And she would always answer the same way. I want to go home. I want to go home. One question that I would ask her frequently was, what's your favorite song? And out of nowhere, one day, she actually responded. She sang, I'm coming home, I'm coming home, I'm coming home today. For I long to see the old folks again. I'm coming home to stay. And from that moment, if I sang that song when caring for her, the behaviors would pause long enough for her to sing along a bit with me, and we would get that job done. I learned from this experience that my skills in performing arts could help me as a caregiver. I also learned that I wanted to become a gerontologist. During my graduate work, I had amazing mentors who actually encouraged me to use the arts with my research. I was really surprised. And I started developing research-based plays called ethnodramas. Ethnodramas are developed from research data, such as in-depth interviews. Uh, the data is analyzed qualitatively, and the themes from the analysis become the outline of the script. The words of the script come directly from the participants. The purpose of ethnodrama is to communicate research findings in a way that connects with a broader audience. It was also during this phase that my dad retired to become my grandmother's primary caregiver. I had the opportunity to return to Oregon to spend some time providing him with a respite break so you know, he could get that break. Um, here's a picture from that visit where my oldest got to meet her great-grandmother. I learned about family caregiving. I learned that it can be tedious and monotonous and emotionally challenging. I also learned during my graduate work about caregivers in the United States. 53 million unpaid caregivers provide the majority of support for older adults in the US. It is the backbone of our long-term services and supports system. It, it saves us 470 billion annually. Caregivers are important. Caregivers are also overburdened, stressed, and frequently come to the experience with little or no knowledge about how best to support their aging family members. When the average, by the time the average caregiver actually asks for help, they're already burnt out. And this is the story that I wanted to tell with my research. I wanted to connect caregivers like my grandfather, or my grandmother and my father, um, to resources that could help them better deal with caregiving, to reduce stress and burden, and communicate their needs to the broader community in order to improve practice and policy. So I developed Portrait of a Caregiver. 
This ethnodrama was created over four months with family caregivers interviewing one another about their experiences. We have produced performances throughout Utah with a nonprofit theater company called Walk Ons Incorporated. Um, it's professional theater actors who take theater to underserved audiences. Uh, I want to share with you a brief clip so you can get an idea for what this might look like if you were sitting in the audience. She always used to say, get your hair out of your face. You have such a beautiful face. What we would do is she would come, she'd look at me, and then she would just sort of put her hand over the hair. I don't ever want my mom to be gone. And that was her way of saying, you need to push your hair back, or I like this. She would just hold it in her hands. One of the major themes from Portrait of a Caregiver is represented in this quote. But they don't see behind the scenes. They don't see the doctor's appointments. They don't see the messes are made that you have to clean up. They don't. They don't see those little things. I learned that caregivers want others to see. They want others to benefit from their stories. And they want their family members to better understand the realities of caregiving. Audiences expressed greater understanding and they felt validated that their own caregiving experiences were represented in Portrait of a Caregiver. With funding from the National Institute on Aging, I am working in partnership with Family Caregiving. The majority of those who developed Portrait of a Caregiver were caregiving for somebody with dementia, someone living with dementia. It is one of the most challenging caregiving situations that exists. These caregivers experience greater levels of stress, greater levels of burden, and greater levels of burnout. And I wanted to see how we could use Portrait of a Caregiver to better prepare individuals for the complexities of dementia caregiving. Something that we do know is that Dementia caregiving interventions, they, they have better outcomes when the caregivers are actively engaged in interacting and applying knowledge and skills. However, we know very little about how to improve active engagement, and we know very little about how to measure this and how to know if it works. Something else that we know is that the arts use multiple senses to enhance engagement. The arts also use techniques to improve practice and rehearsal in preparation for live performance. I'm taking all of these concepts and incorporating them into this project. It's called Enhancing Active Caregiver Training or Enact. During this process, caregivers of persons living with dementia will view a short vignette of Portrait of a Caregiver. Then in small groups, they practice for caregiving similar to rehearsing for a performance. They're using arts-based techniques to apply knowledge and skills, and then they reflect on the experience. During this process, I'm assessing how this works with the goal of reducing perceived stress and burden while improving caregiver well-being. It is my hope that engagement through storytelling and the arts can help us see behind the scenes, and that it can help us all recognize the many little things that make up a life, improving our ability to support the unpaid caregivers in our communities. Thank you.